What was once the Polk County Courthouse now serves as the Polk History Center and houses the Historical Museum and Library. The museum serves Polk's community through special events, volunteer opportunities, and educational programs. The museum's exhibits and programs continue to grow and change as new information and artifacts become available. More details are coming up next on Polk Place. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Tina Mann, and joining me in the studio today is Murtis Young, the Historic Preservation Manager at the Polk County History Center. Hi, Tina. Welcome. Thank you. All right, coming up in July, it's a very patriotic month, and we are going with the theme of voting. Why don't you tell us about what we have in store? Well, let's start with the Curators of Curiosity program. Um, for the entire month, we have decided to focus on Voting. We have an election going on, in case you haven't noticed. And um, so to complement the July Lunch and Learn, which will feature Supervisor of Elections, Lori Edwards, our children in the Children's Discovery Room will have activities, activities available so that they can discover and um, explore the history of voting in the United States. They'll be able to discover which amendments of the United States Constitution address voting. They're going to be able to imagine what voting might be like in 20 years. And in addition to that, they'll get a chance to cast a vote in a mock election. So that sounds like a lot of fun for the littles, get to learn a little bit about history of voting and, and get to participate in an election. Um, a lot of them, this is their first big election they're going to be seeing. So, And going along with that, we also have some programming for the adults. We do. Our Lunch and Learn in July will feature our Supervisor of Elections, Lori Edwards. And in her lecture, she's going to explore not only voting trends, but also several pivotal elections that occurred in our county that featured um, some Polk County natives like Spessard Holland and Lawton Childs. And in that election, because of those people and the giants that they were, certainly changed things in the United States and in the state of Florida. Our young learners are in schools out. Yes. July. So we hope that the young learners will also, we encourage them to attend the Lunch and Learn because we're also going to offer a mock election. They'll have a little voting machine that they'll be able to look at and be able to uh, actually cast a vote. And then we also will feature, or not feature, but we will have election workers at the Lunch and Learn so they can help people register who have not yet had an opportunity to do that. It sounds like a good opportunity and, and it's always, um, it's always an interesting event when you can attend and it's something with one of our constitutionals that you don't I mean, get an opportunity to meet them and to meet them yes and um, we're really excited about that and to you know focus as like we said we're ramping up and gearing up for an election we want everybody to be prepared and be excited that is and the recommended reading this month sounds really exciting why don't you tell us about that book I am I haven't read the book yet but I have read the review and I definitely plan to read it it is by Scott Ferris it's almost president the men who lost the rate the race but changed the nation and you know I hadn't really ever thought about that but we do have some situations certainly during my lifetime where people who ran but did not win changed the way the the face of the nation looked after the election those feature Barry Goldwater George McGovern, Ross Perot, and Adlai Stevenson, among others. So it'll be an interesting book to read, and even though they weren't elected, just what happened in our country as a result of their losing the race. Yeah, it's always an interesting time at the History Center, and of course, you also offer other opportunities and exhibits to learn more about, you know, Spessard Holland and some of the people who have, you know, served in Polk mm -hmm. County. And have oh yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's still very new to us, but we have a very extensive exhibit that features the accomplishments of Spessard Holland. So we hope that you'll come down or all our visitors will come or our listeners and viewers will come to the History Center and have an opportunity to learn more about Spessard Holland. Okay, and that um, Lunch and Learn, of course, is on July 19th from 12.15 to 1. Yes. And the Curators of Curiosity is all month long. All month. All month long. It's always a good time to visit, nice air-conditioned, place to go with the kids for the summer 
And coming up on the 16th is the architectural tour. Why don't you tell us about that? And, and I heard that we have a little bit of information about some of the features this month. Well, the architectural tour gives our visitors an opportunity to have a focused, curated tour to learn about that neoclassical style of architecture. That's, it's a style that was promoted during the Beaux Arts movement in the 19th century, and it features both Greek and Roman styles of architecture. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do, in addition to focusing on the building and talking about the architecture of the building, is to take a couple features and um, really focus on those and what they mean and how that m distinguishes that building and certainly the columns, those four massive Corinthian columns. And they're, the interesting thing about those, they flank both the north and south side of the buildings and they were used by the Greek, and the Greek influence and they always were placed on buildings of significance, buildings that had very important significance. So what that says to us is that we considered in building this beautiful courthouse, this is a building of significance. It has importance in those columns tell us about that and of course the columns uh, the top of the columns are um, adorned with those uh, the beautiful acanthus leaves mm -hmm. and the interesting thing about that is that the same Corinthian columns are used on the United States Capitol building and it's adorned with bundled corn stalks so it's the same but different but it's just interesting to learn about these features of that architectural style in addition to that Jamie Jamison who is our um, curator of programs in education will have an opportunity to, or the visitors will have an opportunity to learn more about the windows. Mm -hmm. We don't think much about the windows, but we feature two styles of windows in that building. One style early on were windows that were handmade, and she'll be able to point out some very distinguishing characteristics of those windows. They're actually from molten glass. They're blown and hand cut and then she can show those, uh, point out the characteristics of those windows. And then of course we know when they became um, machine manufactured because the windows now will show stamps of where they were manufactured. So they are interesting, they have their own stories to tell. So we'll talk about the columns and the story the columns tell about the building and then the windows. Yeah, that's my favorite thing. I love architecture and it's always so interesting for you know, just every time I go there, and I go there at least once a month, and I notice something new every time. And oh, yeah, we'd I love that you come there once a <laughs> month. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, July is going to be fun at the History Center, but also we are continuing the Citrus Label Tour, and we have another one to announce. Color is exploding all over Polk County. We are thrilled, absolutely thrilled, that Davenport will be hosting the dedication or the display of their second citrus crate label. Now, of course, the citrus crate label tour is an enhancement to the history and heritage tour for Polk County. And these citrus crate labels represent a period of time in the citrus industry when we were shipping this fresh fruit from the market here to, or from the uh, areas in Polk County, from the packing houses here to the markets in the north. And these crate labels were used to entice the buyers to buy a particular crate of fruit. Each of these labels represents a particular brand and they represent the grade of the fruit and the designers, the lithographers, used wonderful icons to describe the fruit and you know the colors were used to describe the particular grade, but then they created these iconic artistic billboards that feature um, landscapes and they feature images that they thought would depict uh, an interest in living in Florida, but certainly entice these buyers to buy this particular fruit. So you would see beautiful ladies, or fishing scenes, or hunting scenes, or sunsets, or you know, when you're buying fresh fruit in the market in New York in December, and you see a scene of a beautiful sunset on a lake, gee, maybe living in Florida would be an exciting thing. So these citrus crate labels tell a story of this culture and this history that's so important to Polk County and the state of Florida. So we're excited. Davenport is going to be featuring their next one. It's the Matador label, and it's going to be dedicated um, in, in the Merchant Square 
on July 11th and it will join the other citrus labels that have come online. Polka Dot, of course, was the first at the History Center and then Golden Holly was the first in Davenport and then Hilltop was just recently dedicated in Haines City in Railroad Park, followed by the Lake Alfred brand. And then we have others that are coming online that we'll be announcing. And yes, we are so thrilled that the Citrus Crate Label Tour is actually coming to life and we're gonna see these beautiful, iconic Citrus Crate Labels all around Polk County. And they really are colorful and beautiful and they did their job. They got people moving to Florida. They did. And we had a population explosion. So, <laughs> <laughs> And of course, if they people want to stop by, I got to attend the photo exhibit last month with Jeff Spence and Lynette Spence and Grady Judd and that's still on display. It is. You know, we're so fortunate that we have people like our amateur photographers who are um, in this exhibit. They take an interest in Polk County's beautiful outdoors. And we have beautiful photography that represents really wildlife and um, scenes that exist in Polk County that aren't in other parts of the state of Florida. So it's an opportunity to showcase the beauty of Polk County and our natural landscapes. So actually we had decided that we would keep this exhibit in place I think until late August or October. We've, we were talking about extending it way beyond that because it is so popular and people enjoy so much coming into the museum and being able to see photographs of owls or swans or alligators or wildlife, small flowers, big flowers, things that, are, that represent the beauty of Polk County. It so it's really, a beautiful exhibit. It, it is, and the, the pictures are just, just fascinating. My favorite one in the whole thing is the squirrel taunting this owl, and that's my... I know, it's that fun? <laughs> it's just so fun, and, and, and again, every time you go in there, you notice a different picture. You notice something different in the picture, and I loved the stories where they took these pictures and then later realized what they had caught on camera, so it's, it's just fascinating. And, I know that this is going to be, you know, the next few months is going to be people's last chance to catch some exhibits because there's going to be some some switching around. Some soon. changes. Um, certainly the, um, the Jewish Families of Polk County is on display until mid to late August. So we want to remind everybody to come mm -hmm. in and take an opportunity or take some time to come and visit this exhibit. Uh, Kat, St Kat Eskin from uh, Florida Southern College. Mm -hmm curated this exhibit and it is so beautiful because it tells the story of the influence and the contributions of the early Jewish families who came to Polk County in so many areas in industry and citrus and in the legal community and in the healthcare medical community. There are just so many contributions of this family so her exhibit features a select few of these families and we want to make sure that everybody comes in and takes a look at that and then just what life was like for Jewish people in Polk County in the early days of our development. Well summer is a great time to visit the history centers. Mm -hmm. We encourage everybody to go out and visit. We do. We'd love to for you to come and it's cool and comfortable. It is and beautiful. Well thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Love to be here. Polk County has a rich history and heritage, and the Polk County History Center is continuously thinking of new ways to help Polk residents experience that history. The museum's collection includes natural and cultural objects related to Polk and the greater Central Florida area that represent our history from pre-Columbian to present day eras. The artifacts on display at the museum represent individuals, cultural groups, and events significant to the region. Located at 100 East Main Street in Bartow, the History Center is open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information about exhibits and events, you can check them out on the web at polkhistorycenter.org or give them a call 863-534-4386.